Okay, I want to talk about something a little more serious, actually a lot more serious. I want to talk about sexual abuse, okay? What most people don't know about me, some do, some don't, because some people, I try to tell people about things so that if they need a confidant, somebody to come to, to talk to about what they've been through, you can always talk to me if you've been through abuse, whether it be physical abuse or whether it be sexual abuse or manipulation or gaslighting. Words do cut. You know that whole saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That's not true. Truth is, words cut more deeply than anything else. Hold on, I gotta turn my fan on here. It says my device is too hot. Okay. I would much rather be punched by somebody than have them say something that's mean. And the reason being is you just don't ever forget those hurtful words. You can't take that back. You know, bruises heal, but words, they stick with you forever. They can replay in your mind and when you're asleep. And it's not fun. Some of the things that I've been through, and I'm not going to give any names because nobody needs to know because I have forgiven these people. And this has been many people. I have been through a lot in my life. I used to be an exotic dancer. And with that comes territory of a lot of things. But the truth be told, I would much rather meet somebody in a strip club than I would in a bar. 99.9% .9 of the people that I've met in strip clubs are usually just lonely men looking for somebody to give them time and attention and affection, just kind. You go to a regular bar, people are like, hey, do you want to get a pizza and fuck? No, I don't. Really, I don't. Most people that go into strip clubs are people that have worked their entire lives that just invested more into money than they did into their family. Simple fact. I have met some great guys there, but I've had some stuff happen to me at bars that's been pretty, pretty traumatic. I've been slipped a roofie. I was left underneath a bridge basically for dead after being raped. I have had somebody try to kill me with carbon monoxide poisoning. And somehow I survived it. I have been choked while being raped. I have been drugged several times. I have been gaslit. Like, I would leave something somewhere and be like, oh, that never happened, or oh, you didn't leave it there. That messes with somebody's head really bad. You know, when you have somebody telling you certain things didn't happen, oh, my ducks are going in the other yard. <laughs> when you have people telling you things didn't happen when they really did happen, it really messes with your brain, dude. I mean, I've been gaslit by three different people that I can think of, four different people actually, that always told me I wasn't good enough or I was losing my mind when they were moving stuff intentionally to mess with my head. Yeah. I had somebody told me that I was gonna get shot in the face because they were sick of dealing with me. That was painful. 
I've had somebody try to push me out of their car. Because they wanted to be rid of me. I've had semis drive into me, but I know the reason why that was. It's because of the way that I look. They're looking down, you know, trying to see who's in the vehicle. And I've almost been crushed, I don't know how many times. You know, sometimes being beautiful can be a blessing. But sometimes it can be an, a real nightmare. You get people that think just because you show a little cleavage that you're easy. Not true. People think that if you're kind, you're weak. Not true. I, I'm a very caring, loving, giving person and I love charity. I love to give to charity. But at the same time, people see you being charitable and they just take and take and take and take. I have had people who have taken everything from me. I'd have nothing left and they'd still treat me like I'd never done anything for them before. I have one person in my life, and I'm not going to allude to who it is in any which way because I've forgiven them, but they needed blood. They had lost a lot of blood, and they needed blood. This is somebody who my husband had worked for that never ended up paying him, still owes him to this day, but we know we'll never see the money. This is people that's constantly running from the state. Constantly running from the cops, dodging them. And she needed a blood transfusion. And I was willing to donate my blood. Not only did that, I went around to everybody that I knew. Because this person has a lot of children. And... I asked people, I said, what is your blood type? Would you be willing to donate blood? What is your blood type? She had to have supposedly 11 um, units of blood. And they said they couldn't give her any more. And she was still out for blood. And I was the same blood type as her. And even though this person had wronged me, I don't know how many times, something always took me back. It's kind of like... I think I've got that Stockholm disease because even when people have abused me in my past, okay, I still somehow usually find a way to forgive them. And I don't know if I forgive them for them or if I forgive them for me, but I'm always forgiving people and I always get burned. I finally have learned after 35 years, almost 36 years, to finally put my foot down and say, no, you're not going to treat me like that. No. Ever since I've moved to where I'm at right now, I have been sexually abused by one, two, four people. And I kept letting it slide. And I kept not saying anything. I kept not saying anything. But I was so sick and tired of it happening. I'm like, you know, if I don't turn these people in, they're going to think this is okay. And the word's going to get around. And people are just going to keep abusing you or me, you know. So much to my dismay because I don't like to turn people in. But... There comes a certain point where you get sick and tired of the bullshit. And you have to learn to stand up for yourself. Because sometimes you're the only person that will stand up for yourself. That's why I'm against bullying. I remember years ago, I was at a bus stop. And there was this little boy and he kicked this little girl in the back. Off the bus. And the bus driver didn't do anything. And neither did the teachers. I was so mad. I got out of the car. I had my kids with me. And I walked over to the bus. I says, why didn't you do something about this? What did you do? I grabbed that little boy by the arm. 
and I took him straight into the principal's office. I said, look, this is what he's been doing. I went and talked to the teachers and the bus driver and they're not willing to do anything about it. I says, why do you even have teachers on guard if they're not gonna watch the kids and keep them from getting hurt? Bullying is wrong. You realize how long that affects a child? I mean, what happens to us in our childhood defines who we are as adults. And you wonder why people have so much hatred and fear and anxiety. It's because things happen to them when they're little. It's like me, when I was a little girl, I was locked in the closet by my brothers and sisters. They thought it was all fun and games, but what they don't realize, that caused a lot of hurt and pain for me. I finally got to the point where the closet became comfortable for me. So I would move myself into the closet and I would sleep in there. I said, just put my food by the door. You know, I'm five, six, seven years old because I was so used to being locked in the closet all day while my mom was at work because my brothers and sisters were babysitting me and they would lock me in the closets. Yeah, that hurt. I mean, you're talking like a tiny little, you know, I had to be in fetal position to be in this closet. I was hung from the bed by my underwear as a kid off the bunk beds half the day when they'd babysit me. I would be on a trampoline and they would grab my underwear and they would rip it up over my head. This is when I used to wear granny panties. It's the reason why I will not, will not wear granny panties ever. It's why I only ever wear G-strings or thongs. It's because I have a fear of wearing underwear because when I was on the trampoline, they'd grab my underwear by the back of the head or on the back and they'd pull it up over my head it would be stuck just like this and my head be, be cocked back like this and I wouldn't be able to move and it would still be attached to my bottom and my mom I would always tell her but she never believed me that's why when I got into being a teenager I became a pathological liar and the reason why I did that and this is my justification is because nobody ever believed me anyway so why would I give a crap about telling the truth because everybody always thought I was lying so I said well hell, if they think I'm lying then I'm going to start lying so I did and that that ended at the beginning of my marriage because I found myself lying to my spouse because it had become comfortable for me and I didn't like it so I got this whole idea of becoming radical honesty I got it off of, I think it was the show Liar Liar or something like that. There's a guy on there that said Ralph Glossy, no matter what, they just told the truth. And so I told my husband, I says, if I say something, you know, cause there's times I'd say, oh, the sky is pink and really it was blue. But I believed it was pink because I believed all the lies I was telling. I says, if I say something, I want you to come out and say, hey, prove this to me, prove this to me. And he never did. But the fact that I held accountability for that and asked him that I could have had to be responsible for it. That's how I broke that habit. Just know, no matter where you've been, where you come from, or what you have been through, you are loved. If nobody else loves you, I love you. We are all brothers and sisters here on earth. And if you can't take the time to lift somebody up and pull them out of their slum because you think you're better than them, then really, you're not better than, you're worse than them. You know, I'd be the first person to give, you know, a homeless guy everything off of my back, you know, all the money out of my wallet, if I think it's legit. The one thing I hate with charities is charities that they're like, oh, it's a charity, but we're going to take 90% of it and the kids are going to get this little piddly amount. I despise that. And I despise for people that are always asking for handouts. Usually if somebody's asking for a handout, they don't need it. The people that truly need handouts are the ones that won't ask. It's like me. There's times that, you know, I could use the extra income 
And the only thing I ask is for people to like and subscribe to my page. It's just a button. That's all you have to do is push the button. It helps me immensely. But I'm not going to go out and ask for handouts, you know, unless I have a way to pay them back. Or I can work it off. Or, you know, be a farmhand for them. Or cut their hair. Or dye their hair. Or do something. Because if something is given to me as a gift, like my grandfather, okay, so for Christmas, he gave me, and it doesn't matter how much, but he gave me some money for Christmas, which he does every year. And I was extremely grateful for it. So, <coughs> excuse me, hold on. <coughs> yeah. So in return, since he did something kind for me, I was always taught to pay it forward. Don't pay it back. Pay it forward unless... You need to pay it back because they need it. Pay it forward. So for Christmas, we donated anywhere from two to $3,000 worth of stuff to Sub for Santa and some stuff to, for Toys for Tots. And that's how I paid it back because I know that's what my grandfather would have wanted. You know, there is no honor in lying. There's nothing that good comes from it. Unless it's, you know... The only lying I do is, hey, I don't know what's for your birthday. No, there's not a birthday party night. Oh, I didn't get you anything. You know, everybody tells those little white lies, but those are harmless, okay? Other than those, if you're lying and saying, no, I didn't cheat on you. No, I don't like you when really I do. Stuff like that. You just need to be straight up and honest with people because people will trust you more and give more value to your name if they know that you're trustworthy. Sorry, my device keeps overheating. So, if you want to know how to get people to open up to you and to talk to you, no matter how gruesome and painful it could be or how great it is, no matter what it is, always keep your word, always keep your promises, and always tell the truth. Because, you know, say I broke some guy's arm. And I did it maliciously. Not my style, but say I did. And I wanted to go back and apologize to that person because I figured out it was the wrong person that did whatever that made me that mad. You realize how long stewing over stuff just beat you down inside it's kind of like I can sit here and stew over this for a year two years three years four years and let it eat at me inside or I can take the bulls by the horn and I can go up to him and say look I've messed up I'm sorry I made a mistake how can I fix this how can I repay you and you know what? even if they don't forgive you at least you can finally let it go and say, okay, I did what I could, so I threw it in their court. If you sit and wait to apologize to somebody forever and still about, it's just going to eat at you. It's going to keep you awake. It's going to make you miserable. So that is my advice to you. Always keep open communications. And another thing, sexual education. When it comes to children, okay? I've always been of an open mind that you shouldn't shield your children from everything because I felt like I was shielded from everything as a little girl. And man, I became wild, wild, wild when I got out of the house. And I'm talking wild. Like, I became a nude model. I went stripping. I mean, you don't want to know the places I've been. I've lived lifetimes for like 60, 70 people. Half the people I know, probably about 90% of the people I know, don't even have a fourth of the experience that I've got. I have been through so much stuff, whether it been blessings, whether it been traumatic. I have lived life to the fullest. That is for sure. It is time for me to settle down. Because I'm getting older now. I want to be a good role model for my kids. And I do still have a wild streak. And I probably always will. 
that's probably never going to change. But I like having a little bit of a wild shape. But, you know, you can still be a little on the wild side and not cause damage or hurt or anger or issues or anything like that. So stay playful. You may grow older. Don't grow up. You can still be responsible because there are responsible children out there. I know because I've got several of them. So be a responsible big kid. Enjoy life. Live life to the fullest. And don't let stuff get to you too much. Let it roll off your back. If you've done somebody wrong, just go and tell them. They will value the honesty. And even if they're mad at you now, they'll think about it. And for them to release it, they're going to have to forgive you. You may not know about it, but it's going to happen. I hope you all like my channel. I hope that you guys will like and subscribe if you have not done that yet. Hit that bell so you get notifications when I set notifications up. And I appreciate my subscribers. You guys are phenomenal and you are wonderful. There is another channel called uh, Trip, uh, Trip Drop has beautiful music and yes I would like to be YouTube friends I've gotten all your messages apparently you haven't gotten mine <laughs> and there's another channel I want to mention it's called JJ Heller they have the cutest mommy music that you will ever hear check it out so I hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk to y'all later bye